Welcome to Slasher Sunday. Tonight I'm going to be talking about the 2014 meta sequel to the original Town That Dreaded Sundown. So, within this film, the original film is just a film that was set around the events that actually took place within the town of Texarkana. Now, this is uh, something I've seen done in other movies, but uh, it's a really cool way to do a sequel. As opposed to a straight up sequel to the original movie, we do a meta sequel where that film is a film in this town. So I dig it. Um, I think what this is probably known best for is that the killer looks a whole lot like Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th Part 2. In fact, I'd be curious on if that's had some influence on why they changed the look of Jason in 2. Maybe not. I don't really know. I don't look into special features and behind the scenes stuff as much as I should. I'm sure they have a whole documentary explaining why they went with the hockey mask, but I'd be curious on, on if that's even addressed and they're like, you know, we need to get our own look because this, uh, this sackhead is already taken. Um, all right, so this movie has got some really brutal kills. It's, it's, it's a really violent, vicious movie at times, and for that, I really, really enjoy it. I will say, not a big fan of the original movie. I watched it one time, and I was mostly bored. I found it very dull. I thought the trombone, the iconic trombone kill was interesting. You know, a cool idea, not all that great. In, if I'm actually like looking at it as a, as a kill itself, yeah, it's a clever idea, but there's only so much you can do with it. It's just stabs, and that's that. So there you go. Um, and I can only imagine what people think of actual murders being the basis for an entertaining film. Like people who lost family members in these events and then them making some kind of, you know. But I guess I guess in the original movie, it wasn't playful, and it, and it kind of played out more like a dramatization. So, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I guess it just depends. I guess it really just depends on the scenario. But anyway. Um, the look of the Phantom Killer, cool stuff. I mean, he, he definitely looks terrifying. If you saw that out in the middle of the woods at night alone, absolutely terrifying. So I do like the look of the killer, and I like that they retained the look in this one. This movie is, you know, this movie is not perfect, though, by any means. They have some serious storytelling issues in this movie, and most of that has to do with every other character but Jamie and maybe you know her boyfriend that or her like new boyfriend after she loses her current boyfriend and then seems to replace him overnight um he there's no focus on anybody else like anybody else who comes into the movie like lone wolf uh, Morales the the cop that comes into town what was his point in the movie what were any of the cops' points in the movie? To be red herrings? To just be there for Jamie to run her analysis through, her investigation? What did the cops do in this movie? Nothing. I mean, Morales, I mean, what did he, he comes and he's like watching the movies for some reason. He's like sitting there and he's investigating and he's watching the movies. And then in the end, Jamie handles it herself and they don't do anything. And then he's like, all right. Gotta go. Adios. Okay, so why are you even in here? What, what's, what's, what's the point of their inclusion? That's what I'm struggling with. When I was watching this movie, at the very end, I was like, but wait a minute. What point did any of these characters have in the film? Why even, like, why bring in an outside detective to not do anything with him? I don't get it. Like, why not just have the regular cops in town be the ones investigating and they're the ones that don't do anything like why bring in this guy I can't come up with a reason so 
I don't really get that. But they did it, and there you go. So that's a huge issue with the movie, and it's just bad storytelling. So there you go. Um, and so when they're making out and they see the guy out in the woods, they do try to leave, just not fast enough. As soon as they looked over and saw that guy, boom, car would have been on and they should have been out of there. But uh, no. Um, the mom, poor mom, the freaking poor mom. That's, that's sad, man. That's sad. Um, that her mom, uh, that the mom had to like come up to her and she's all upset and weeping and she's like, you slut. Like, I feel bad for the mom for sure. But for the, do- for the, uh, for the girlfriend, Jamie, the main character, I was like, I mean, I know her mom's irrational. I get that. She's just lost her son. She doesn't know how to process it. She's pissed off, this and that. But, man, Jamie has to be accused of being a slut. (laughs) But then, I mean, this is what's kind of interesting about that, though. Not that this is slutty. People grieve and all the other, you know, in any way that they seem fit. and, And we're not, who are we to tell people what the process of grief is? No. She goes and she meets another guy. And he tries to kiss her, which she freaks out about and like throws him out of the car. And I was like, okay, like, dude, why are you trying to kiss this girl? She just lost her boyfriend like yesterday. What the hell's wrong with you? But then the next time she sees him, which is the next day or later that day or something, she just like gives him a kiss on the lips and is like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have made you walk home. All is well. And then the next sequence, they fuck. And you're like, your boyfriend just die now i'm just saying like if people in town would have found out about that especially the mom who lost her son i mean she didn't lose him because he faked his death <laughs> but she thought he was dead if she found out she was just banging some other dude that she just met i mean yes they were they supposedly knew each other when they were young what doesn't matter but some new guy let's say oh my god Imagine her mom's reaction then. Now, in the movie, in movie terms, the audiences will sit there and they'll, you know, some will demonize her as a slut for that activity. I I mean, I'm not on board with that shit because I know that if it was a male character and he was grieving and some chick came around and he slept with her, I guarantee you the there would be a lot less people who are like, oh my God, what the hell? What a slut. What a, what a piece of shit. There'd be some that were like, wow, you couldn't grieve for your wife for more than 10 seconds, but it just would not be as harsh. It's just not. It's just not. That's just not how things work. There is a total fucking double standard in the world. Um, and that's not the only one of them on either side. So, But that's not what we're here to get into. But that whole sequence when she calls her a slut and all that, I was like, damn, man, that's brutal. That kind of reminds me of Sheriff Brody. And, um, and the mom, um, why the hell can't I think of this kid's name right now? Shit. I should know my Jaws trivia. Um, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. But like when she goes up and slaps him about that kid's death and she's all pissed off about it, it's like, that's not Brody's fault. I always am like so angry in that moment. Like, dude, he's the only guy that was trying to keep your kid alive. He told everybody. Nobody fucking listened. It's so frustrating to watch that sequence. But yeah, anyway. Um, this is a little different for sure, but yelling at her, calling her a slut when she just lost her boyfriend like that, that's just, I don't know, it seems mean-spirited to me. Um, and, oh man, okay, so this, <laughs> this is going to be one of my new, this is going to be one of my new sayings, man. Like, I want a girl to fuck me like I just got home from duty. Just like I just got home from war or something or, or uh, serving in the military. I haven't been gone a long time and I get home to my fiance, my wife, whatever. I think it's fiance because she has like a ring or something. Oh my God. And they're like railing each other in that room. Uh, good sex scene. And then if swallowed up by a brutal scene where she, he takes his head and he smashes it. Cuts her fucking... This is such a sad sequence. What did these people do? What did these people do? So mean. But anyways, so they hunt this couple down. 
and these guys just they're having you know he just got home from service and his wife his girlfriend his fiance whatever is there and she's so excited to see him and they go and they fucking you know let it all out and have fun and then boom you know he goes off to get ice or something and then the girl's all happy she's looking at her ring you know they, she's been patient she's gonna marry this guy she's in love it's amazing it's this wonderful sequence and then it's so just mean-spirited she takes the guy's head and just smashes it against her window and breaks it and everything and then chases her down and then she's running through a field and boom she runs into a scarecrow which scares her and gives away her position which is so fucking it's such bad luck because yeah she'd be hyper freaking afraid in that moment and if she ran into something that was humanoid like that was right there in front of her. Of course she's going to scream out just in a natural reaction. Which he wasn't... Would she have not screamed out there? Would she have gotten away? Now, of course, this begs the question. How often are there two killers? How often are both of those guys out there doing this? Always? Because in the movie, of course, we're not supposed to know that there's two killers until the very end. But realistically, are they always out together or are they not? I don't know. So, yeah, I just thought that that was uh, that was really sad. And uh, I'm still trying to remember this kid's name. <laughs> it's fucking me up. Oh, this is something I know, and I can't believe I can't fucking think of it right now. Anyway. Um, and Nick, the, the new guy that she's hanging out with here, she's, you know, it's set up. There's plenty of red herring set up in here, but you think throughout the whole film that he's definitely the killer. And to see his body all cut up in pieces like that, some gory-ass shit in this. I mean, it's not overly gory. I wouldn't say that. My memory of it was worse than it is. Um... The Kittner boy? Yeah, the Kittner boy, right? Miss Kittner? Yeah, Kittner. There it is. There it is, the Kittner boy. All right, anyway. But yeah, I just feel like... Um, I feel like my memory of this movie was way more violent. Way more over the top than it actually is. Not to say that there isn't some brutality in here. Not to say there aren't some good kills in there. There is. But, okay. Then we meet Josh Leonard from Blair Witch Project, who is the cop in this, um, and ends up being the predominant killer, who is the uh, grandson of the guy who was essentially, you know, murdered by uh, the phantom killer and was forgotten. And this is, this is them trying to make him remember, you know. It, it, so that guy wasn't the killer, so the way that Josh Leonard's character is going to make people remember is by becoming the killer. So are you trying to make, are you trying to shit on his uh, memory? Because that's not how you, because no one ever caught the Phantom Killer. Nobody knows who the Phantom Killer is. But if his lineage ends up being the killer, although he didn't intend to get caught. Uh, her boyfriend did intend to get caught here in the end. He wanted everyone to know it was him. He was going to expose it. He wanted to be remembered because he didn't like his place in society, the way that the town groomed them and made them the way they were. He hated that. Move. Fucking move, you crybaby. Really? You got to kill people? And how does that even come to pass? Like, how did the cop and this dude get together? Really, I want to know how that went down. Like, how did they come together? For the, I'd love to have seen the conversation. Oh, hey, um, I hate living here. Oh, well, uh, maybe we should kill some people because I have a, a grandfather that was forgotten. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Or I could just move and start my own life. It's... The, the reasoning in this film is very thin. They're trying to have this big twist stuff where the guy fakes to, faked his death and all this. Why even fake your death? Like, what was the purpose of that? You want to be remembered, but you want to die? 
and pull out some of your teeth to make it look like the other. Like, it's all so nonsensical. I liked the movie, but it's got a lot of flaws. Like, I've always had a real high opinion of this, but having rewatched it with more of a critical eye, more watching it as, you know, a reviewer, I suppose, that's a lot of flaws. <laughs> There's a lot of flaws in the story. I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's not good. Uh, oh man, you want to talk about a sad scene? Um, okay, A, the, there's a lot of sad sequences actually. Um, the kid who commits suicide by walking up to the vigil as the masked killer and then the military guy who's getting vengeance for his brother in arms that's been slain pulls out a gun, shoots him twice and drops it and is like, arrest me, arrest me. I, I handled it. I killed it. Like he was getting vengeance. For his buddy, or his brother, I don't know who he was exactly, but he's getting vengeance for this guy. And it ends up being the wrong person who, per- who purposely left a suicide note, went down there to get himself shot to death. Like, that's so sad. And then the next sequence is everyone being told that the killer's been killed. So these two young boys go out and they, you know, they decide, like, this is gonna be our night to experiment the way that they're talking is that you know they have been thinking about doing this that they are not really sure maybe they're still maybe still still unclear of their sexuality or whatever they want to experiment whatever it is the interaction between them in that exchange is very realistic coming from experience now but seriously, these kids sitting in a car together and they're, the way they're talking to each other, I was like, oh, this is adorable. These guys are like, I don't know if I'm gay. I don't know. Like, I just want you to uh, suck it. The way that they talk to each other and the kid, guy's like, oh, suck it. It just is very genuine to me. So for some reason, even though these guys are only in it for like literally a minute, there's something so realistic about their performance and the way they back and like go back and forth, and it's such an un it's it's a scene I never see in a movie from almost any characters, like this reluctant homosexual encounter where they both have a thing for each other, but they don't really know exactly how to handle the situation, and they're not really confident in anything yet not even in their own sexuality, let alone asking the other one, like, okay, uh, I don't really know how to handle this. It's, it's very immature and, 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 and whatnot, but like, it's sweet, kind of. I don't know how to explain it, but the way they were bouncing back off of each other, I was just like, oh, this is, this is adorable. But then they're fucking brutally murdered. And the guy, like, as soon as they see the killer, man, boom, that guy turns on the car, tries to get out of there, and the dude gets hit over the head, he's bashed, and then he's laying down there, and his face is all swelling up, and his buddy's been tied to a freaking beam, and he's just, he's doing the trombone scene, they're recreating the trombone scene. But the killer uses a gun in this movie a lot, which points it towards the cop. I mean, it definitely makes, makes sense that the guy would be such a good shot because he becomes a fucking sniper later in the movie when he kills the gas station attendant and when he kills the dude who's at the pump and when he kills the grandma. He's like this sharpshooter. Um, so yeah, it would make sense that he had, uh, you know, police training at least. Um, and then, oh man, another really sick scene in this movie. Um is the reverend when they're talking to him the the dude the uh oh what's his name like howell thor oh freaking whatever the hell his name is in overboard her his his uh or her husband in that movie thornton howell or fuck i haven't seen that movie for i gotta love that movie but um but yeah that that actor um he's <laughs> talking about oh god man I, I i try not to get into any kind of religious banter because I know how much that can trigger people but like this in this particular I have to talk about this because it's just such nonsense here where he takes this as a positive that he loves that this has been putting the fear of God into people that that his uh you know his church has never had a better 
attendance record than as of late because people are terrified and they're turning to God. And this has been a godsend that the, that this person is doing the Lord's work by putting so many people in his church and, and using fear to, to put them, you know, in, in the, uh, the light of God there. That is just sick shit, man. That's why I've never been a religious person because it's all fear mongering and I can't stand that stuff. And just the way that he plays that, the way he talks about it is despicable to me. Like, this is a good thing, man, because it's turning people towards Christ. Like, this guy's a hero to me. He's a hero to, you know, my faith. Oh, just the way he says that all that shit is, is it's just such arrogance and... Ugh. I was oh, so upset when <laughs> he was talking about it. Um, and... Uh, oh, dude, the dude that's getting the blowjob in the chair and he gets shot through the eye and there's no cutaway at all. It's a brutal kill. I was really surprised by that. Um, just you don't see on screen, no cutaway, uh, you know, headshots like that often. But it was really good. Um, and I think that's that's the girl who gets chased by the scarecrow. Or, or chased by the scarecrow, uh, scared by the scarecrow. The other girl is the the military girl. Um, how does she die? She runs out of the room, or does she even get out of the room? Fuck! Now I'm misremembering because I thought she was a uh, girl. No, that makes sense. She no, the other girl is the one that that ran through the fuck. Can't remember her death now. It's not a super memorable, clearly. I think she's just shot. Isn't she just shot? Yeah. I don't remember it being all that interesting. Oh, right. She tries to get in the car and it won't start. That's what it is. And I was really annoyed by that because modern day films, we shouldn't have that happening anymore. Like, new cars start every fucking time. When we were kids and growing up in like the 80s, and yes, our cars always had issues starting. Um, not that some cars aren't still old, but the car she was in, I, when, that happens in certain movies. I remember that happened in like Halloween H2O when the car was like brand new and it wouldn't start. I was like, oh, give me a fucking break. You know how many times my car hasn't started? Well, I can't even remember the last time my car hasn't started because I, I tried to turn it over. Not saying anything about, old, as I said, older cars. People have older cars nowadays, but these cars, come on, they start. It's stupid. Um, but yeah, she, she doesn't, and then he grabs her and pulls her out of the car or something. Yeah, God, her death isn't memorable to me, to me at all. Um, and she actually tries to leave town. I dig that. I, I like that. that. That's a rarity. They never actually get up and leave town, but she tries, and he tracks her down and cuts, his, cuts her boyfriend into pieces. And then, yeah, we get the multiple killers. How the hell did she get that gun off the ground. Now, how did he not see it in front of her, A? And how did she get it in her hand and spin her? He's got his legs around her. She's got his, she's face down in the dirt. She somehow grabs the gun and fully flips around and shoots him quick enough to where he can't bring down the knife. But he's not thrown to the side or anything. How, if you have a, like a friend, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, whatever, and you're at home right now, Lay down on the fucking bed. Now, this might turn into sex, so you're welcome. But if it doesn't, try to turn around real fast and do something to them without throwing them off. Have them put their arms above their head and try to bring down, like, you know, something like a, you know, don't actually put a knife in your hand, obviously, but don't have anything. Just pretend you have a knife in your fucking hand. Try to spin around and, and pretend like you're shooting the person. Come on. That makes no sense. All of it, and they don't even show it. They just show her face down, and then they show her completely turned around shooting him. Makes no sense. It makes no sense. <sighs> anyway, all right. I think that's about it. I, I, I got everything out there that I got to say about it. So what did you guys think about this movie? I'm actually going to be able to uh, not have to wear hats anymore. That's always why I end up wearing hats for a good period of time is because I haven't had a haircut in forever. I'm getting one tomorrow. So I, I don't want to have to wear hats anymore. You don't give a shit. But anyway, guys, uh, what do you think about the original? What do you think about this one? I got this one at the Dollar Tree. 
Okay, recently. I did it on my thing, and I had it up here. I have the movie upstairs still, but got this for a buck. Another thing I didn't say about this movie is a lot of the day sequences look really blurry, like smudgy, like someone smudged the camera. It's all blurry around the edges. What's up with that? Is that a stylistic choice? If so, it's terrible. I don't know why the hell they did that. But anyways, all right, guys, let me know what you think about this movie, and I will see you soon. Adios.